John Wineland, uh, my friend, it is good to see you. Thank you for being here. And uh, right on, P. Yeah. Game on. Yeah, game yes. on. I love it. You're mm-hmm. killing it. <laughs> killing it in the first 10 minutes. I love it, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's, a, that's awesome. how we do. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So can you give the people here, those who don't know you, just a little context from for what mm. you do. What do you actually do in the world? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, I've been teaching men's work and sacred intimacy and embodiment uh, for men and couples and women too, but, um, but mainly men and couples uh, for the last 15 plus years. Mm. And, um, you know, and I, I've written a book on men's work. I'm writing a second book on sacred intimacy that, um, you know, that I'm, I'm about halfway through. So congratulations on the book, man. That's awesome. I know what a, I know what a, labor of love and birth that is. Um, yeah. And so I run, I have a, a six month men's program. I run every year. I have a, a, a teacher training. That's a year long teacher training. That's a three year certification program and embodiment, sexual polarity teaching and sacred intimacy, you know, and I just, uh, I, 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 I love my life. I absolutely love this. And my, my question to you, John, uh, for those, you know, in the audience who see they see you as that some people have seen you and been following your journey but they don't understand how you actually perceive and look at abundance and money can you help us just what is your Mm. mindset around money i don't um okay so i come at this this is something that i learned from my teacher and um you know those of you who know my work you know that i talk a lot about the masculine and feminine energies, not just of every human, but of the cosmos, right? Structure and flow, the emptiness and fullness. I talk a lot about the polarities. And so the 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 teaching that I learned from, from David was that money, like all abundance, is the feminine, right? And that so uh, creativity is the feminine, money is the feminine, abundance, a flow of clients is the feminine, all of those things, everything that is happening in the world, all of the abundance of the world is the byproduct, is the expression of the great she, right? The great she. And so the feminine needs and wants and loves structure, so my practice has been throughout my as I, my, as my career has kind of developed and I've had bigger and bigger programs and more and more money it's to really create a meticulous structure on two two fronts right so um on the structure front structure you could consider the masculine it's the container that holds the flow of abundance and so you can consider your structure, your website, your mailing list, your um, the way that you book clients, your your team, your like everything that holds this flow of abundance is structure. So if your structure is leaky, if there's a if there's a leak in your boat, then abundance is just going to kind of leak out. And so what I will usually teach people, you know, in teacher training, we go through this. But but what I usually teach people is that. You have two tracks. One is to deepen the practice and the transmission that is your offering to the world, right? That is also your offering to the world also is the feminine. And then on the other, and you do that by working with teachers, by, you know, by reading books, by practicing, by doing all the things. And then the the masculine piece of it is that you, you keep tightening up your structure to be more and more meticulous and more and more, um, tight and more and more in alignment with the truth of who you are. So that's everything from your brand to your, right? and so what I've seen, not just for my work, but I've seen with people who's like, who's, whose career takes off. And I have a lot of students whose careers are now taking off is um, they, they master that they're, they're simultaneously working both sides of that, the structure piece and the flow piece. And when you do that, Things just sort of happen very naturally and organically. Okay, this is really awesome. And I just want to take note of it for those of you who are letting this land. I know this because I'm your friend and I even see you do this. By the way, we'll go on vacation. We'll be in Mexico somewhere and, you know, we're having margaritas and mushrooms (laughs) and different stuff. And John will still be doing his practices. He will still wake up in the morning and do his practices and go through this thing. And so... What I'm wanting people to really hear, and I think this is a piece not many people know, how long did you study under David 
without being a millionaire and having the type of abundance that you experience right now? 10 years. 10 years. And not just David, but many other teachers as well, but 10, 10 years of it. And I had many, I mean, I think this is important for people who are starting because they'll see people who've been in something for 10 or 15 years and they're making money and they're successful and they have an online impact, et cetera, et cetera. But they won't see, nobody was there with me in Santa Monica when I had three people showing up to my men's group, you know, again and again and again. So for a few, for years, for years, I'd say two, three, four years, I just taught what I needed to teach. And I made no money or very little money. And I had three people one week and then 10 people and then 30 people and then two people. And then, you know what I mean? And it was just this kind of, uh, I have to do this no matter who's showing up. Okay. Let me just say something yeah. again, because a lot of people, uh, John, you have so much energy and you're such a big spirit and soul. And I, I, as a outsider, but insider, look at that. And I go, I know why you do. And it's because you're so devoted and such a yes to what your internal calling is. And, and in my mind, you didn't think about it. Like, what can I make money at and then do it? It was no. the other way, right? No, I had a, I had a, yeah, I had a, uh, I had a business, right. For many, many years that paid for my training and paid for, you know, that, that, but that paid for it. And then at the same time, I was just starting to teach what, I was practicing myself and what I was learning and I would do this thing. I had a garage that I converted and I would have people come and it was donation only, right? Like, mm -hmm. so I'd work with couples, I'd work with men, I'd work with women, I'd work, you know, just like, just to get the 10,000 hours in, right? Cause the 10,000 hours is real. That, that is a real thing. Right. And, and so I would do that and, you know, people would give me 25 bucks and it was for a donation for my daughter's foundation or they'd get 50 bucks or whatever it is. And, and that's how I, that's how I started. And it took, you know, I took probably until about seven, eight years ago, maybe before I really started to make some money. And how young were you seven, eight years ago? <laughs> 50, 50. Yeah. Everybody I was, I was in my, yeah. Let that land. This dude was 50 years old when he started to experience the overwhelming fruit of his labor. Now, before yeah. that, Tell me about the abundance that you experienced before you ever saw it in your bank account. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, I think the true abundance was that I was living my purpose. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was, I knew my purpose. I was living my purpose. I didn't really care so much. I mean, that's not true. Of course I, I wanted it to be, but I had no expectations that it would. And I just kept living my purpose and more and more men kept showing up and more and more couples. To, and then, you know, I met people that I would teach with and, and I just kept, you know, you know, shout out to my buddy, Rich Litvin, who, who kind of really taught me about, you know, kind of the business of coaching and all of that. I was in his container for three years. So I just kept learning. I really, I really pride myself on being a student. I'm still a student, man. I'm still, you know, I'm still paying, paying my teachers a lot of money, <laughs> to, you know, to, to up level me. I mean, I've invested, I don't know if you talk about that, but I've invested over well over a million dollars in my, in my time, right? Well over a million dollars. And, and so, you know, I, you know, that I've, I've earned that back, you know, tenfold at least. And, and, and I know it's because I'm telling the universe that I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in growth. I'm investing in my own practices and, and, you know, it pays off when you do that. In dividends. Um, all, everybody listening, by the way, just drop a one in the comment. If what uh, John is sharing is landing for you, this dude went 10 years in. And, and got to his 50s before he started to experience uh, the quote-unquote outer abundance, specifically in finances, because there's so many other layers of abundance. There's so many other layers of being a spiritual millionaire. And John, I believe you are the embodiment of a spiritual millionaire. You literally you, do, like, it's how you live, right? I get to see you way, way, way behind the scenes. And it's mm. always the same. Exactly how you are in front is exactly how you are in back. You are super intense in general, as I am I, right? And such a big loving heart. And I love to see people like you win like you are. And it's yeah, a true thanks, inspiration for me too. So thank you. What do you wish, like, and I know this, this is a tricky languaging, but what do you wish 
you had potentially known sooner mm. that that would have set set you up in a whole nother way mm. Mm. good question let me think on that for a second mm -hmm. um I think I think I, I I kind of knew this, but I didn't really get it, like fully get it, that my abundance was, again, the byproduct of being meticulous in trying to set up the structure of my business um, to um, that my personal practice, like the things that I was working on, the things that I was struggling with, the things that I was working through, and the deep inner work and outer work that I was doing are the like the foundational pieces of my practice now, of my teaching. And so I didn't I didn't realize that my struggles would then become, you know, even talking today about my struggles when I started would become the food that I would be giving other people who, you know, need it. So I, I wish I would have known that all of I would have stressed less and I would have you know, mm -hmm. suffered less. And, 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 you know, at the time I was taking care of, you know, for the first part of my career, I was taking care of my daughter. And so I had to make certain money and be really consistent. I couldn't quit my job and just go become a coach. I really had to make the money. And so I realized, I think I would have loved to have just trusted. Oh, here's another one. I wish I would have known that all of the consistent work month after month, year after year, was an inevitability of success that right it was an, it, it just it was looking back i see that it was inevitable because of how hard i was what working kind of because, because of the people that i was working with because of the you know my commitment to it um i i wish i would have known that and then relaxed you know <laughs> just stopped fucking stressing out about it dude um there's so many gyms inside of that can you share with the people? Because there's some people in here. And by the way, uh, Angela, where are you, you at? I mean, um, um, everybody mute yourselves. I cannot find the freaking button to mute everybody. Give me one second. Whoever's talking right now, uh, hold on. Sierra, I think she got it. Thank you, Sierra. And then, and then, John, I'm asking you this question. Angela, I'm making you co-host right now so you can find it. Uh, there we go. John, uh, there's some people in here who are doing pretty well. Mm. And they want to know how to take what's working to a whole nother level. So my mm. question to you is what's working really well inside of the consciousness of John, the entrepreneur? Mm. Mm. Well, a couple of things. Um, a couple of things. I, 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 I pared down what I was doing right? To really be focused on two main programs per year. So I'd say 70% of my income, my, you know, my company's yearly income comes from the things that I'm most passionate about, which for me is the embodied men's leadership training um, and the teacher training. And so I focused on those big programs and puts and build a team around, built a team around them and built, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I share it, you know, I share the profits with my team. Um, and so those things really just focusing on not just grabbing new thing, new thing, new thing, like really putting all my heart into the things that I, I love the most really has paid dividends. And then the rest of it is I get to play, I get to have a podcast and I get to have uh, this, you know, really cool online community platform. And I get to, you know, do, you know, classes online every once in a while because it feels good, but not because I have to. Yes. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's what's, what's really working here. And now I'm close to the point where I don't have to work. You know, and I, but I, I, I work because I love it and I work because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not done, you know, growing myself. I mean, you've seen me, man, I've gone through a really intense last few months and everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm diving into, I'm, you know, kind of metabolizing, digesting, and then offering to, to my students as well. Dude, absolutely beautiful. Uh, there is, uh, we could go on for hours and days. Uh, yeah. truthfully. I have another 10 minutes, so it's up to you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm good for another 10, so, but you, you let me know. Um, yeah, let's keep going then. Uh, this is a yeah. blessing. I just, I'm trying to be mindful of everyone's time and, and yeah. then we're, we'll be transitioning to Adam Roa next for those of you who are 
Uh, Adam is awesome. With this. Yeah. Um, Heard Adam spout some really beautiful poetry the other night. So yes. yeah. 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 He's the beast. Okay. So um, let's take some, some audience questions. Start mm -hmm. popping them in the comments right now. And, and while we do, John, where are you at right now? I'm in Manhattan beach. I'm Got at it. the beach in LA. Yeah. And you also, you own a home in Sedona. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have crypto. I do. And yeah, I have, I, have a, I have a bunch of investments, but you know, that's just kind of the, for those of you who know the richest man in Babylon book, the kind of classic one, right? Pay yourself first. That's another piece that I hope gets spoken here. Like uh, and take the, take 10% of the money you make and stick it in something that you believe in and, you know, and it will pay massive dividends. Boom. Okay. So we're going to answer some of these questions. The first person said, what is your morning routine? Can you mm. yeah. give us yeah, some Yeah, that's that? great. That's great. Yeah. So I usually give myself two or three hours in the morning. I will walk. I will usually do about a 30 or 40 minute walk. I'll usually do about 30 or 40 minutes of Qigong or Kundalini yoga. I'll usually meditate for about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'll write. Because mm. writing my book is is part of my spiritual practice. And yeah. if I, I can't say I do those every single day because I just travel and sometimes life gets in the way. But when I do and I do it, you know, eight, 70 to 80 percent of the time, my day is just like rocket ship and everything else I do is gravy. That. Everything else I do is gravy. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so this yeah. question came in from uh, Scott Greenleaf. He says, how different is your current offer? than your first profitable offer oh it's night and day i mean there's a few pieces that are that are similar right you know and because i'm teaching you know uh spiritual masculine development and so those principles have not really changed in the last 15 years so some of the principles are the same but there is just so much more because of my life experience you know i mean i've been through a lot i've lost a daughter i've you know been through relationships and breakups and you know lessons and all of those things but all of my all of my sort of life experience is now in my current offer and all the nuances of it. Whereas in my first offer, I think I was a little more rigid and dogmatic because I was just like, you know how it is when we, when we, we think we're good at something, <laughs> we think, we think that we, you know, it's the only way. So I feel like, I feel like I've just, the breadth of what I teach has grown tremendously. Yep. I love that. Um, Someone asked, what would you say to someone who's challenged with focusing in on one particular area of service? Um, I would say have a real deep conversation with yourself and, and identify the one truth that you want to give the world. So whatever that is, whether it's a women's embodiment class or a men's weekend or a spiritual millionaire, you know, uh, book or whatever the one, the next one thing is that is like lighting up your heart, I would, I would get really clear on that and then schedule it, put it on the fucking calendar, whatever, whatever it is that you're clear, you want to give the world, schedule it, put it on the calendar, fill it as best you can, and then deliver. Love it. Um, somebody said, what makes you successful as a millionaire relationship coach? What set you apart in the marketplace? Do you have unique messaging or ecosystem? Mm. I think what, what really set me apart was that I put in the 10,000 hours with one that. very deep teacher. Right. Yeah. Like it's so easy to get to, to be spread out and do one workshop here and one workshop there. And, one, and so what I what I decided to do is I decided to take one or one or two core practices and core modalities of teaching. For me, it was working with David Data and, you know, and, and learning um, his approach to spiritual intimacy. And and uh, and then I added on to that, but the but the foundational piece yes. was was yeah was was the was what I think set me apart because I think people feel when you're just like a jack of all trades and master of none versus a master of one or two things that are very very deep and powerful, and then you also have other things to add to them. I think people really feel that. Mm -hmm.